everybody and welcome to hit the books the only realistic fantasy booking podcast in the universe thank you everybody so much for listening to this week's episode the go home show before the god dang royal rumble i am your host as always ryan knightsey and with me is, as always the man who just right as we started brought his brought his dog in the room dealing with his dog knocked over a microphone and it's just just it's just really starting out with a whole mess and a half over here it's mikey manfredi the spicy nugget mikey how are you doing bud listen nobody <laughs> has to know about that i could have just cut that out of the podcast and nobody would have been any of the wiser but you called me out in front of everybody as soon and now as I started it has to be a... my dog ended up finding a thing of chocolate ice cream and started trying to eat it <laughs> that I forgot was in my garbage from the other day. <laughs> so I had to make sure he didn't die. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. I'm not, I'm not laughing because of that situation because that is a, a, an important thing to solve. But just the hilarity, the the... Uh, the what is the word? The Jenga collapse that was this moment, or just like one thing leading to another, just collapsing, com- was just h- hilarity to the, me. The complete Rube Goldberg machine that just happened because yes. I tried to, I tried to, we- I tried to, I have wheels on my chair, so I tried to like wheel back towards my dog, but then the wire of my mic was hooked on my ch- chair arm, and I didn't realize, so it just yanked my whole mic down. Here's a question I forgot to ask. Working, we... at least. <laughs> yeah, here's a question I forgot to ask before we started recording, Mikey. Why is your dog in the room to begin with? <laughs> I'm still confused but, about that front. Because he was barking upstairs and making way more noise upstairs than he was being here in my room. But now he's going through my garbage can and being very annoying, which I should have seen coming. Stop eating the chocolate ice cream! <laughs> oh man, we're starting the show off with a huge chaotic energy. A huge chaotic energy caused by this goddamn dog. What's your dog's name? Give us a. Can you tell us a dog name and then one good memory about your dog before we just we continue to yell at this dog? This is Charlie, and there isn't any. <laughs> oh, I that I doubt Char- such a good person as person. Good dog is Charlie. There's not a good story behind Charlie. Uh, he's annoying, but he's mm-hmm. he's annoying usually. But if he's ch- if he's chill, he's fine. I, I like I like hanging out with him when he's chill and just when he, like, we're sitting on the couch or whatever watching TV, and he just mm-hmm. jumps up and just lay and just lays down next to me, and we can just hang out and relax. What is Charlie's favorite TV show, and why is it uh, Rescue? What is it Rescue Rangers, the dog show? Uh, do you mean, um, oh my god, what the hell, I can't, <laughs> no, it's, um, Paw Patrol. Yes, Paw Patrol. <laughs> Whiskey Rangers and Chip and Dale. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he, he doesn't watch Paw Patrol, he watches Chop, because Food Network is the only thing that's ever on my TV anymore. I mean, that's Food, fair, like, I guess. Like, like, we have a TV upstairs, and it, it's the only one with cable, the rest are, like, smart TVs with, like, Roku's or whatever, like, the Roku or whatever, so it's, like, we only have cable on one TV, and the one TV that does have cable is on Food Network basically always. hmm hmm Speaking of food, last week we did say that I was gonna try to eat those Hostess s'more food things, I already forgot the name. Oh, the Moon it. Pies? Moon Pies, thank you. Uh, I was, I went to the store... Literally after that episode, and Kroger had zero moon pies. I checked, I checked the bread aisle because for some reason it's always there. I checked like the you know the ends of the aisles where they also have some stuff. Uh, I couldn't find anything. I couldn't find any moon pies. I found everything else. Um, so I just I just couldn't get some moon pies. I asked Jesse if she ever had some, and I think her answer was like no as well. Um, so maybe that's that's the moon pie update. But also, <laughs> the moon of pie food, update is that you didn't get to have moon pies. Also, huge update by time by time this episode comes out, 
Well, no, by the time this episode comes out, it's going to be closer because they're not out immediately. Mikey, right, huge right. news, huge news out of the out of the home of the Bell. Um, would you like to break the news since since it is canon in the show that we love this product so much? Uh, do you want to break break the news that is now at this point in time like a month old? So the news, the news that... <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's the dog and the elephant in the room. It, it's just like the chaos. Oh my god. It's anyway, so funny. <laughs> anyway, the news is that uh, that's probably a month old by now is that Taco Bell is finally bringing back potatoes. It doesn't. The news doesn't sound as exciting after the dog leaves the room. I gotta be honest. <laughs> They're finally bringing back potatoes. Uh, they they decided to be the heroes to their own problem. Longtime listeners know uh, of the Taco Bell saga that is Mikey Man Freddy. I just, want, the, I just want a cheesy potato griller, and that's literally it. The the dis, uh, uh, disdain, not necessarily the word, but just the additional uh, anger that came from COVID pandemic was Taco Bell discontinuing the potatoes on the menu for however long, you know, until uh, until otherwise until notified. M- March 11th now is the date. Still, March- still ways away. Still a ways away for sure. Um, I don't, I don't know if it's like the, I wouldn't classify it as like disdain of Taco Bell, but just like it was the added, the addedness of like knowing that the potato grill is your favorite thing at Taco Bell, and then during the COVID pandemic at the beginning, it was like that. It was like the layoffs. I think were around the same time for WWE, which really affected our show. Obviously, um, it was just like then, on top of everything. Yeah. Like, why did Taco Bell have to add the 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 small the small extra sting of taking away potatoes? It was just a it was just adding to the pile. It was just honestly adding to the pile, and it was yeah. very frustrating. And I understand why it's frustrating, but it was just like it's just like one thing after another. But like you said, they're back March eleventh, right around the corner. Um, Mikey. Are you going to be at Taco Bell on the date in question? Probably. I just want a loaded. I just want a cheesy potato griller, and that's it. There's less excitement than I than I thought that was going to bring, but uh, I because, appreciate because it's like it's like I'm excited that they're bringing back potatoes, but like also Taco Bell caused the problem, and now they're acting like they're like these martyrs for potatoes that are finally bringing back potatoes after after all of our. After everyone being like, we heard, we heard your complaints, so now we're coming to the rescue and we're gonna listen to you, even though they were the ones who caused the problem in the first place. I mean, that's fair. That's fair. Um, I can't think of a transition. But speaking of solving your own problems, let's get into the goddamn fantasy booking show, Flawless. which obviously is a great transition because that is basically what we do here every single yes. week. We uh, write our own cards. Uh, I write Raw. Mikey writes SmackDown. We write our own goddamn wrestling cards full of matches, championship changes, uh, uh, promos, uh, backstabs. You name it, we write it. It's in the goddamn show. Uh, so we're basically solving our own problems that we create every, each and every single week uh, here on this program. Uh, but we are here today for the go-home show before the Royal Rumble. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening, of course. Uh, so why don't we get into it, Mikey? Yeah, let's do it. And we'll start off, as always, with the Monday Night Raw, head written by me, of course, your boy, Ryan Knightsey, the man, the myth, the legend. Let's get into it. Monday Night Raw. We're opening up the show with Ricochet taking on Akira Tozawa in a singles match. Uh, obviously, the Ricochet United States champion will be taking on Akira Tozawa. Ricochet defending his title against Tommaso Ciampa in a steel cage match Ooh. this Sunday. Oh yeah, so he's taking on fellow. He's taking on fellow One Nation member Akira Tozawa. Of course, Akira has uh, Apollo Cruz in his corner, and Tommaso Ciampa is on commentary. Mm. Um, uh, Tommaso Ciampa on commentary sort of puts over the fact that you know he wants to defeat Ricochet personally at the Royal Rumble. Sort of, sort of the, saying the idea, saying that like when you know. If you know if when if Akira Tozawa was able to defeat Ricochet here, they're not going to like break his arm because Tommaso Ciampa wants to do it personally at the Royal Rumble and take the title from Ricochet at oh, very the Royal cool. Rumble. 
So they're just saying if if we if we win here, we're not gonna he, we're gonna let him off because I want him this Sunday. I want him to. I want to beat him this. This Sunday. one's mine. Exactly right. Uh, it also should be noted that at one point during the match, uh, Brian, we see that uh, Daniel Bryan and Chad Gable are watching this uh, contest backstage. Okay. Okay. Um, should just you know, just be stated after what happened last week. I'm sure they're upset about it. I'm um, sure they are. Uh, and the winner of this match, probably to no surprise, is going to be Ricochet himself. All right. Uh, Ricochet getting a big win. Big win heading into the pay-per-view. After the match, Ricochet leaves the ring quite quickly because you never know if they're actually going to break his arm or not. So why not get the hell out of Dodge? You know, just to be safe. Just to be safe. You never know, right? You never god dang know. You're right. Never know. So that's how we open Monday Night Raw. Um, moving right along to a backstage interview with those said superstars from before, Daniel Bryan and Chad Gable. All right. Uh, Charlie asked Gable on his thoughts of what, den- what went down last week. Just a reminder, there was a beat the clock challenge where uh, Tommaso Ciampa set the time by defeating Eric of the Viking Raiders in about 10 minutes. Gable versus Gulak happened. The match ended in a draw when uh, Ciampa got involved in the match. Mm-hmm. extending the time limit so that Gable would be able to win. Uh, uh, so Charlie asked Gable about what he thinks went down last week. Daniel Bryan instead responds, saying that you know Gable doesn't need to answer that. The question is, rather, what is WWE management going to do to make sure that we get what was rightfully ours from the get-go? Ooh. Uh, last week was a travesty for Chad Gable, and now we're just moving forward with it. Unbelievable. Chad Gable is one of the best athletes this locker room has to offer but no matter if we aren't getting the u.s title shot this sunday then we are going to enter the royal rumble and win the wwe championship all right so there we go big announcement gauntlet throwing down yes they are uh upset about the whole thing with one nation set with everyone else obviously gable still not able to talk with brian there uh, and they also announced that uh, they are entering the Men's Royal Rumble. All right. I like it. I like it. I like the build for the Royal Rumble. Yes, you got, you got, you got to build that Royal Rumble. Got it. Uh, next up, speaking of build to the Royal Rumble, we have a sit-down interview with MVP and the LLC, the Raw Tag Team Champions, Cesaro and Bobby Lashley. Uh, MVP says that all three of them have been training quietly for the Royal Rumble, but in our absence, absence, some people believe that they are the best tag team in our division. First off, One Nation. You've been running amok in the entire locker room, and honestly, I have no place for that. Uh, hospital bills cost money, money that we would rather keep than waste on your shenanigans. And Reed and Ruas, we're watching you two on the come up. We respect it. I'm telling you now, you ain't ready. But we aren't going to talk about that just yet. We aren't going to talk about that business just yet. We're looking first at the Royal Rumble. Bigger fish to fry, and that, of course, is that Rumble. Once we win that, then we can fix this sort of tag team division issue and then put our minds towards Keith Lee. But one step at a time, that's how you build a business. I like it. I like the the one step at a time speech. I like yes. how they're definitely treating themselves as like a business business, too. Yes. Well, it's it's slow growth here. We're not going to, yeah. you know, we're going to win the Rumble. Then we're going to next steps. They have a game plan, a business plan. And that first step is going to win been the Royal Rumble. Because you know what I say, one step at a time, there's nobody to rush. It's like learning to fly or falling in love. <laughs> Incredible. Speaking of gauntlets being thrown down, it's time for the Change Your Luck gauntlet match. All right. That's right. If you've been following with the show here, I've been doing this little thing, series of matches called Change Your Luck matches. Basically, uh, a number of weeks ago, Peyton Royce won a battle royal where she was going to, uh, which gave her the number 15 spot in the Royal Rumble. Um, Each week, she sort of doesn't necessarily defend that spot, but she gets the opportunity to uh, increase it or decrease it by winning or losing matches. She has so far increased it to number 19. Um, So here on the gauntlet, she's going to face other people that uh, she will have a series of opponents, uh, four opponents, where they all all of our opponents were, are going to be in the Royal Rumble, um, so that is you know that's that's that they can be from anywhere they can be Raw SmackDown NXT. So Mikey, right. maybe I use someone from SmackDown, but don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it. Okay, I won't. 
so let's talk about this. This is the first half of the Peyton Royce Change of Luck gauntlet. Uh, first off, Peyton Royce versus NXT's Lacey Evans. Okay. Uh, that means, of course, Lacey Evans is going to be the Rumble. Uh, but of course, this means that I'm going to give the victory to Peyton Royce. Okay, Peyton Royce She's moving up again. First win, she goes from 19 to... 21. 21, right? Yeah, 21. She goes up uh, two spots, right? Yeah, she goes up yeah, two spots. 21. She goes up to 21. Um, next up is going to be Peyton Royce versus Ruby Riot. Mm-hmm. Uh, where Royce is again going to get the win. A, a tougher challenge, but uh, able to get the win here. Okay, so she goes up to 23. Yeah, she's at 23. Peyton Royce great. Just, just moving through the rumble here. Moving through the rumble. Uh, we're going to take commercial breaks and whatnot. Um, and we're going to come back. We're going to show a video package. So I'm just going to talk about this video package real quick, Mikey. Um, basically, it's going to be Rhea Ripley announcing that she is entering the Royal Rumble. Uh, she Ripley says that late 2020 has been rough for me, but I'm coming back stronger, hungrier, and I want the Raw Women's Championship. There are not many people in this locker room that can take down Shayna Baszler, and all of them have fallen, except for me. I am the next Raw Women's Champion. I will be your Royal Rumble winner, and I will see you at WrestleMania. <laughs> I don't know. I like, I like, like, the sales pitch. Like I will see you at WrestleMania. Yeah, it's uh, it's my um, strange Mid Atlantic accent that's making this sound too formal. But think of more of an Australian badass saying that, like the uh, like, like a used car salesman. I'll see you, and I'll, and I'll see you <laughs> at the at lot. WrestleMania. <laughs> be your at next, lot. be your next great deal. Um, speaking of about great deals, great let's move along to the. <laughs> speaking of. Moving on to the second half of the Change Your Luck gauntlet. Uh, it's going to be Peyton Royce. This is her third of four matches. Will she be able to win or lose? Hold up her spots. What is she at, Mikey? What's her number? 23 right now. 23 right now. Uh, next opponent is going to be none other than SmackDown's Billy Kay. <gasps> Billy Kay? Against yes. Peyton Royce? Yes. <laughs> oh, no. Kay. Ryan, what have you done? Kay comes out. Uh, and they, of course, you know, right. reminisce about the old days and whatnot. Uh, but then Billy Kay lays down for Peyton Royce, saying uh, that she wants her to win the Rumble. It's a very emotional moment. Peyton Royce gets the pin. She moves on to what is it now? She's at 25, number 25 in the Rumble. Billy Kay taking the fall here for her friend. Billy, I love it. Billy Kay taking the fall, yeah, letting her friend have union. this. The Iconics reunion here. Billy Keg uh, lets Royce get the win. She won. She's her friend. They're still friends. Just because they're on a different brand doesn't mean they're still they're not friends anymore. Incredible. She wants her to win the Rumble. Uh, and the number twenty five. That's a good spot. It's a good it spot. Uh, and of course, a beautiful moment. Beautiful, touching, emotional moment. Uh, and as Billy Kay is leaving, walking up the ring, she gets hit by a kendo stick. Oh no. She gets knocked by a kendo stick, and who is it? It's Bailey. <laughs> Bailey just sees Billy Kay and is like, "Get out of here!" Exactly right. She uh, attacks Billy Kay with a kendo stick. Sort of laughs at the two of them. Stuff you know, but the stuff between Royce and Kay. She goes down for the match. Peyton Royce versus Bailey. Bailey getting a little bit of redemption, a little bit in her mind, at the very least. Uh, and she does. Bailey gets the win. Ooh. Um, the first Probably person Peyton Royce's to- run. The first person to not only defeat first, actually, the first person just to beat Peyton Royce since the Battle Royal a number of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, so a little bit of redemption for Bailey, a little win here uh, that brings Royce back down to the earth at twenty three, still a solid number. But Peyton Royce being able overall to go from number fifteen to twenty three uh, is a great, great job on her part. Yeah, definitely uh, a good run. And that's the gauntlet. That's the gauntlet, folks. Very nice. I like I like Peyton's run. Uh, I think I think we one of I think you retweeted this on the uh, the podcast page a, a, a couple of a weeks ago at this point. But uh, gauntlet matches put people over. Yes, I, I I believe my my statement my statement my tweet was something like how I like gauntlets are the one thing WWE you know, in, in WWE world can do 
to solidly put make a new star. Mm-hmm. Uh, I said, I said, you know, the smarky sort of like ironically, it's just people wrestling for like thirty minutes. <laughs> it's it's all wrestling. It's, yeah. So who who would have guessed it? But like uh, you know, the Shinsuke Nakamura is the most recent one. Um, and there's Co- there was Kofi, there was Brian. Kofi famously New Day as well during the Kofi storyline. Brian. Mm-hmm. Uh, whenever they need to have someone uh, become a big star and heat someone up, they put them in a gauntlet. I mean, Rollins, they did it up at one point. Um, it's, it's they always do it. That's it's their way. It's the, it's it's surefire way to heat someone up very quickly mm-hmm. and look credible. Um, uh, I wish may I, I but obviously they can't do it all the time. But you know that maybe that's indicative of other things. But yeah, so I my thought there was applying that here. You know, have a little gauntlet. Uh, I've been planning this gauntlet because I figured it would be a nice thing to like rapidly ch- change your luck here, uh, and yeah, and I guess that that whole series of gimmick matches, um, the change your luck gauntlet. Whether or not it comes back next year, who knows? But I kind of liked it. All right, all right, yeah, I like it too. I think it was really good for Peyton. I think it really, really made her shine like a star and really got her in a good spot for the Rumble at, at number twenty three, which is not bad at all. No, it's not. Um, moving right along, we got a backstage interview with Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke. Mm-hmm. Uh, Charlie asked them what's about to happen, or asked them about what happened last week. Same question as before, Charlie. Get new interview questions. <laughs> um, Mandy Rose says that honestly, uh, that you know, look, we we were wrong. We pinned the crime on the wrong people. But boy, is it at all surprising that it's Chelsea Green and Mickey James that uh, that uh, destroyed her locker room. Uh, Dana Brooke agrees, saying that those two are basically like high school bullies. Mm -hmm. Um, And they say, luckily, we know how to deal with bullies. Suddenly, uh, I guess they don't, because suddenly Chelsea Chelsea Green and Mickey James attack them from behind. Oh, no. Liv Liv Morgan cheering them on. uh, And while they're beating them up, Morgan grabs a microphone from Charlie Caruso and says that I've been dreaming about my WrestleMania moment all year. And at the Royal Rumble, I will finally live the dream. That's right. I'm in the Rumble. No one is stronger and hungrier than I am. I am the locker room leader. And these girls agree. And I know deep down that you do too. We aren't an exclusive club, just a club for the best. Come on, ladies. And the three of them leave. I like the tagline, live the dream. Yes. Very yes. good. Very good. Thank you. I was ho- I was hoping you'd get that. I was really very, hoping very you'd good. get that come across. Live, live yes. the dream for Liv Morgan is very good. Live the dream for Liv Morgan. And I, I also I like live the dream as a heel Liv Morgan. Mm-hmm. It's a catchphrase that works for both babyface and heel, but I like it under a heel, this sort of delusional heel mm-hmm. Liv Morgan thing. Um, But yes. Uh, also, uh, I'm going to personally point out uh, the direct quotes. It's uh, uh, from saying that I'm stronger and hungrier, something that uh, Rhea Ripley said in her I'm entering the Rumble video, that she's stronger, coming back stronger and hungrier and wants the Raw Women's Championship. Uh, making a direct statement. Direct statement. It's almost as if Liv Morgan is making that statement to someone. To a certain who could, somebody. Who could it be? Um, <clears throat> moving right along. Uh, next up, we got our se- segment uh, where Randy Orton walks out with the chair that he used on Ali and Alexander last week. He's walking out to cut a your classic Grade A Rand- Randall Keith Orton promo. Uh, Orton says that last week my friend has turned his back on me, a man he shared this ring with for years, uh, and he blew me off. I invite him in to relive the team of Rated RKO, but the fact of the matter is that he has no interest in me, and frankly, Edge, that upsets me. You see, you know, or I don't know I said, you see, you know. You know, uh, you know, when I get upset, you know, I start hearing, hearing things, and those things start to sort of take control, and last, last week, Cedric Alexander and stuff I'm not saying that. I'm not, he's not saying that. <laughs> And last week, Alexander and Ali saw the brunt of that. You caused their pain, Edge. Their blood is on your hands. But I'm not here to give you guilt. I'm here to promise you one thing. Edge, I don't like it when someone makes me upset. I don't like it when you hurt innocent people, Edge. That is why I am going to make your life a living hell. 
You need to realize, Edge, that you're not going to be safe. When the opportunity exists, I will take what is yours. Our relationship goes back to the Ruthless Aggression Era, and that is where we will return. I will bring you torment that you never realize, but it will be at the point best for me. I'll see you then. Ooh, I like it. I like the call out. I like, okay, I love this promo a lot. It's very passionate for Brad Horton. But mm-hmm. the only thing I can think of throughout that whole promo is when you said Randall Keith. Uh, and it reminded me of this joke I heard on another wrestling podcast where it was like, if, Ra- if Randy Orton was a D&D character, he would be Randall Keith from Candle Keep. <laughs> and I just thought it was funny. <laughs> I'm glad your mind was off the ball here. <laughs> no, I really, I heard the problem and I really liked it. I liked, I liked him calling out Edge and be, and saying that uh, their, their relationship goes back to ruthless aggression. So that's where we're coming back to. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be hell, and I'm gonna basically rain my wrath upon you whenever I'm ready. But also, he's from Candlekeep. But also, he's Randall Keith from Candlekeep. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really playing up the idea that Edge is a, you know, this sort of like ruthless aggression era figure. Mm-hmm. I really, yeah, I, really I like that, that a lot. Um, Thank you, let's, roots. <laughs> yes, let's go and head into our main event, Mikey. Okay. I should have announced this at the top of the show because it's a huge main event. Keith Lee and Drew McIntyre Ooh. taking on Dijakovic and Roman Reigns. Very big main event. Uh, if you recall, this is a main event that we did, or I did, I should say. When was this? I, I've done this main event before. Um, somewhere, wherever the god dang match was. Um, oh, I did it episode five, and this is what, episode 12? 12. 13, episode 13. So I've done it uh, eight episodes ago. Um, but, you know, we got to raise those stakes a little bit because the stakes have certainly been raised between these four individuals. So why not screw uh, the rules altogether and make this uh, sh- no, no DQ tornado tag team match? Whoa. Yes. Big what is basically moves. everybody in the ring at the same time for a no DQ match with these four? They're gonna kill each other. Yes. What is basically uh, a bunkhouse match? Uh, if as I long believe. as Roman Reigns doesn't enter on a Brinks truck. No. Oh well, you never know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Saving it for the WrestleMania entrance. <laughs> um. But is but, but basically like you know your classic like kind of like bunkhouse match. Sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, not it's not you know not you know they're going to be in street clothes or whatnot or whatever. Probably someone's going to be wearing jeans. Mm-hmm. And who's it going to be? Hmm, maybe probably McIntyre will probably be wearing jeans. The good on him. Uh, you got, whenever you do one of these matches, someone's going to be wearing jeans, and you know who's it going to be. Um, but basically, it's, it's like the uh, AW version. It's basically just a no DQ tornado tag match. Where these guys are just going to have the opportunity to beat each other up without any regard. Uh, and that is what happens. <laughs> Obviously, people are going through barricades, tables, ladders, chairs are getting broken, kendo sticks are broken, just all around decimation. Again, this is the go home show before the Rumble. Uh, gotta be big. Gotta be we big. Got two of these guys are in a WWE Championship match, and two of these guys are, are uh, announced. One of these guys is in the Rumble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't stress uh, so a lot of stuff uh, is happening here uh, but the winner of the match I, I do have written down the winner of this no DQ tornado tag match is going to be Dijakovic and Roman Reigns when Dijakovic pins Drew McIntyre ooh okay okay keeping keeping either feud alive by not really ending it uh, by not ending with uh, McIntyre and Reigns or Keith Lee and Dijakovic, I like it. But also, um, Dijakovic's uh, cementing victory over Drew McIntyre. If you remember weeks ago in that number one contenders match, uh, Dijakovic won it by defeating Drew McIntyre, but he won it by disqualification when Roman uh, attacked uh, uh, Dijakovic. This time, obviously, square victory. Yes, this time. It's a fair and square victory here. Um, Dijakovic has proved that he deserves this by defeating and pinning McIntyre. Those two feuds are cemented. 
perfect booking on my end. I like it. <laughs> and that all leads into the Royal Rumble. Keith Lee versus Dijakovic for the WWE Championship. Very good. Both of these teams are great recently. I'm very excited for both of them to come to a head at the Royal Rumble uh, with, with everything going on. <laughs> Roman Reigns and Drew McIntyre, especially since they've gone to pretty big heights against each other, I guess. Uh, yes. You know, attempted murder being one of them. <laughs> oh, exactly right. Exactly right. Uh, um, I'm, very, I'm just very excited to see where these these feuds pan out, too. No, yeah, thank you. I, I'm very excited. Uh, very excited about the Rumble this year. Um, lots of excitement on my end. Um, I guess on my side of the Rumble card, what I've had what I've had announced. I'm, I'm pretty sure I've announced all of these on the show. If not, what we have announced so far on the Raw side is Rick Shea versus Tommaso Ciampa in a steel cage match for the U.S. title. Uh, Mickey James and Chelsea Green versus Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, in the Women's Royal Rumble. We have uh, Royce Bailey, Ripley, Morgan, uh, uh, Riot. I guess I uh, technically I also announced Evans and Kay. Um, we also have WWE Championship match Keith Lee versus Dijakovic. In the men's side of the Rumble, we got Reigns, MVP, Cesaro, Lashley, uh, McIntyre, Brian and Gable. Uh, that's the Raw people announced. Um, so yeah, lots of uh, that's all the Raw side of the pay per view. Very excited. I feel like I put my best card forward this time around. I feel like I really did my best to build to these things. Yeah, I, I like your card a lot. I think it was a very strong go home show for sure. And I am very excited about the Rumble because, man, I want to I want to win one of these Rumbles so badly. <laughs> so badly yeah so badly I bet. <laughs> I bet. it if i don't win it it ruins so much <laughs> of my story oh i'm I, i'm basically planning everything around one <laughs> one winner yeah. oh man it, you know you can adjust around it but still it's, always it's you like, can always you can always work around it i'm sure if it doesn't work out uh I, before we move on i was like thinking about it do you want to let's talk about i want to uh trivia you real quick trivia was, me yes i want to trivia you in our universe i was gonna i was looking back at old royal rumble matches that we put mm-hmm. on and i'm gonna trivia you tri- trivia you tri- 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 i'm gonna act trivia you i got it i got it i get it you're gonna trivia do you, do you me. get it I mean, do yep. you get it yet um i'm basically i'm gonna quiz you on who i want to see whether or not you remember who won the royal rumble uh, last year and the year previous. Okay. Uh, so women's Royal Rumble 2019, our first Royal Rumble. Do you remember who won it? I want to say it was either Becky or Charlotte. Incorrect. Who was it? Uh, it was Ronda Rousey. Oh right! Oh yeah, 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 yeah! I remember that now. Yes, Ronda Rousey lost the her title to Sasha Banks yeah, a match yeah, previous. Yeah, Yeah, I remember that now. And uh and Ronda Dave, uh, entered at number 30. Right. Yeah, that was that was that was cool. In that same year, Men's Royal Rumble, who won uh that Men's Royal Rumble? I can give you hints. I, I think it was Drew McIntyre. It was. Ding yeah, ding okay, ding. That was right. I knew I knew I knew our first Royal Rumble winner ever was Drew McIntyre for the Men's Rumble. Uh, he entered at number thirty as yeah. well. It was the rumble that was the first rumble ever? I think well, number thirty is one. Exactly right. Twenty twenty, our second rumble, January twelfth, twenty twenty. Such matches as Miz versus Styles for the IC title, um, AOP versus Fish and O'Reilly for the Raw Tag Teams. Uh, who? Do we, what do we got here? The Pure versus the New Day versus the OC for the SmackDown Tag Teams. Orton versus Cole for the Universal Championship. Good good on him. Uh, Kingston versus Bryan for the WWE Championship, where Kingston gets injured for 18 weeks. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that was a big one. Um, but let's talk about this. Who won the Women's Royal Rumble in 2020? Again, I want to say Charlotte. Do. Charlotte Flair, ding ding, uh, bum, 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 bum. Charlotte Flair entered the Royal Rumble at number two, and did not win. Uh, I remember she had a member. She had that memorable run. That's why. Who did win? Uh, number eight, Ember Moon. Oh, that was a big push year. 
Yeah. Big push year for Ember Moon. We won't, we get, got our good, big old push that year. Uh, moving on down to number 20, the, the harder one, the really hard one. When I saw this, I was like, wait, what? Men's Royal Rumble 2020. Do it all remember who won this? Was it Finn Balor? I get a shot of the mark there because I don't remember. <laughs> Finn Balor. Uh, I think he was still injured at this time, probably. That was I think wasn't he, was he even in the rumble. Yeah, I was. I think he was still injured. I'll give you. I'll give you two more guesses. Hmm. This this rumble featured such wrestlers as Jeff Jarrett, <laughs> Cassius, Cassius Ono, and Rick Bugs. Rick Bugs. <laughs> I forgot we put Rick Bugs in the Rumble. <laughs> oh, man. This was a weird... I remember this was a weird one you said, right? Yes. It was one I I saw and I was like, excuse me? Number 30 of the 2020 Royal Rumble f- was The Fiend. The Fiend didn't win, though. No, he did not. The first three wrestlers in the Royal Rumble was last year's winner, Drew McIntyre, Brock Lenzer, and Heath Slater. <laughs> Brock Lesnar didn't win. Did he? Oh, he is might. That your, is that your second guess? Yeah. Bam, 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 bam. Yeah. I was like, he might have. Man, yeah, I'm one last guess. At, our own, at our own booking. Additional own wrestlers. Number. Additional wrestlers in the Royal Rumble were Booker T. <laughs> Falter. Uh, uh, others. <laughs> oh, man. A lot of other people were in this. Hmm. I don't. Here's this. Can, this wrestler was a member. A sure. Were they? Are they currently on my SmackDown roster? Correct. They are. Okay. This wrestler competed on the Raw brand, a show that we did not book uh, at this time. Hmm. My cat Tucker has joined us at the commentary <laughs> booth. <laughs> I hope this is a fun trivia that going down, going down Wall Street. I was gonna say Wall Street. This, this, I saw this, Mikey. I'm dead ass serious. I saw this. I was like, "What? They won!" And then I had to look up the WrestleMania card to be like, "Did we make sure that they were in the WrestleMania match at least?" <laughs> I legit or they? could not remember. They were. They were. They they challenged and lost. Uh, they challenged Randy Orton for the Universal Championship and then lost. Oh, that's so not a good, helpful reminder because Orton challenged so many people. Yes, Randy Orton, great run. I'll give you. I'll give you ten seconds. Nine, eight, seven, oh. six, five, four, three. It wasn't two, uh, one. What is your guess? Uh, I don't know. My guess is Kevin Owens. Yeah, I, I have no Kevin idea. Kevin Owens did not win. Uh, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 24, 20. It was number twenty three. Uh, uh, he's previously won a rumble before, but in twenty twenty, he run won it again. Rey Mysterio. Oh right, why did we do that? <laughs> we did not do it. It was it was chosen for I think Raw to win the rumble or something, and right. it was just like who wins it, and it was like uh, we'll give it to Rey Mysterio or something. Yeah, I don't remember that's how crazy. I don't remember how that, how that happened. <laughs> no memory of that Royal Rumble nope. match whatsoever uh, but there we go that's a trip down memory lane for you mikey uh with that out of the way let's get into smackdown live right don't we the yeah. actual the last wb tv program before the royal rumble yeah let's let's get into friday night here we're opening up we're opening up smackdown with kevin owens opening up the show and it's and it's set up to be the ko show he grabs a mic and he says welcome everybody to the ko show tonight however isn't just any ordinary night uh, we have a special, a uh, very special KO show. Let me tell you why. He grabs a folder off of the empty guest chair and opens it up to reveal a contract. This contract Ooh. for an Intercontinental Championship match at the Royal Rumble. Paige has already signed off on it, and I wanted to make sure you, all of you see me do this as well, so I have witnesses or whatever. Uh, <laughs> he, signs the, he signs the contract, and he says, now it only needs one last signature, which leads me to my guest tonight. Samoa Joe. Joe comes to the A ring. Bold, bold move, Kevin. Bold yeah. move. Uh, Joe comes to the ring. Uh, you know, just swaggers down with the Joe, 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 Joe. Uh, and he says, Owens, 
I'm only out here tonight to sign this contract right now because I wanted to tell you something face to face as I do it. I know you probably threw in some wild stipulation to trick me into some crazy match, but here's the thing. He signs the contract. I don't really care. Whether it's tables, cages, extreme rules, inferno match, you name it. No matter what stupid choice you made, I'm going to beat you down and probably even shorten your career. Because at the end of the day, I'm just better than you. And I'll end this little title run of yours in any match you want. Ooh. Owens looked at the signature and says, you know what, Joe? You read me like a book. I did have a special stipulation in mind for our match this Sunday. Since you were so convinced you deserve to win our first match, I made sure that no matter what happens, we'd have a defining ending. It won't just take a lucky break to win this one, no, no, no. Our match this Sunday is going to be two out of three falls. So when I beat you in front of the whole WWE universe, you'll have no excuses to hide behind. Joe laughs. Joe looks at Owens, laughs, and says, neither will you. Joe backs off and leaves the ring. Wow. A a a, a, a eerily calm edition of the KO show mm-hmm. from uh from Samoa Joe. A man that that choked out Jeff Hardy a number of weeks ago while staring mm-hmm. Kevin Owens directly in the eyes. Yes. Yes. And then a two out of three falls match announcement. I love it. Great stipulation, I think. Uh, obviously you can't do like the steel cage or anything to like mm-hmm. keep these guys in or whatever. Um, but two out of three falls makes it a solid, you know, who's the better wrestler. It's not about necessarily the brawler or whatever. Um, but who's the better wrestler? Who's the better willpower endurance to last two out of three falls. Yep. After that, we have match number one. We have Carmella with King Corbin in her corner versus Naomi and Carmella. I forgot about this. (laughs) I forgot about Carmella. Yeah. The king of the queen. Yes. Uh, and Carmella picks up the victory here. Nice, nice job, Carmella. Again, another win. I mean, didn't she win? Did she win last week? She did. She won against Lana last week. Now she's taking on Naomi. Mm-hmm. Love to see it. Love to see the newly appointed queen, Carmella. Yes. After that, we have a backstage. Uh, we have a backstage segment in the middle, in the medical area. We see Dave Mastiff getting looked over by a doctor. An interviewer asks him if he's medically cleared to compete against Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy tonight, and if he is, who is it? Who is his partner going to be? Dave says, yeah, they cleared me. I'm not exactly at 100%, still sore, but it's going to take a lot more than what they did to keep me down. As for my partner, let's just say I made some new friends on SmackDown. Rollins and Murphy won't know what hit him. Uh, Dave Ooh. needs to go prepare for his match tonight. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just because of that randomizer role, we got uh, Rollins just destroying Mastiff's neck. controversial moment where Rollins just destroys Dave Mastiff's neck. <laughs> And now, and now Mastiff is, is making some new friends, having some good new times. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll, I guess we'll find out later tonight. I presume that's the main event. Yeah. Main event. Yes, that is the main event. We'll get to that later. Uh, but for now, after that, we have a video package. And it's none other than the Firefly Funhouse music hits. And we see Bray Wyatt talking to Ramblin' Rabbit when he notices the camera and he says, Oh, hello, my fireflies! I didn't see you come in. Oh, wait, can you do a little bit more of a, like a New Orleans accent there? Oh, hello, my fireflies! I didn't see yeah. you come in. <laughs> great, 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 great. <laughs> I was just talking to Ramblin' Rabbit over here about he about how he and Mercy have been showing each other more respect since they had that argument a while back. Isn't that right, Rabbit? Heck yeah, Bray! Mercy and I are closer than ever now. He hasn't tried to eat me a single time since we talked. Bray looks at Mercy with Perfect. excitement and he says, "Mercy." Is that true? Uh, Mercy says, you know it, Bray. After what you told us about respecting each other, I had to change your heart. Rabbit and I are best buds now. Well, isn't that just wonderful, Fireflies? These two who used to be at odds are best friends now. Maybe we should check up on a certain someone to see if they learn the same lesson. Bray walks over to the door to the funhouse and opens it, and Sami Zayn walks in the room. Not tied up or anything, he just strolls in. He looks weirdly chipper. Why? Wyatt says, Sammy, how have you been? I hope my friend didn't treat you with too much cruelty while you were learning your lesson. Sammy responds, not at all, Bray. In fact, I got you a gift. Sammy pulls a bouquet of flowers from behind his back, and it has a card on it that says, best friends. But the R on friends looks like it's starting to peel off a little bit. Uh, Bray, Bray does like the Home Alone, like, 
face. Uh, he does like the shocked face, and he says, "That's amazing, Sammy. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you." Well, I gotta ask: Do they hug at all? No, do they, they, they don't give... hug. They don't hug. The... Oh, okay. So they're not best friends because the best friends hug and they give the people what they want. What? <laughs> I get it. Good one. That, that, but, 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 but. Hey, that's that's not that's not here on the Fox Network. You get out of here with your TBS <laughs> bullshit, TNT bullshit. Get out of here. Um, oh, sorry, sorry. They 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 <laughs> hug and then spike footballs. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I'll, I'll I, keep I'll keep it. vamping. I'll like, keep vamping of. All right, uh, Sammy pulls out a bouquet, bouquet of flowers behind his back, and it has a card on. They they back. they hug and then escape a prison. It has a card on it that says best friends, but the R in friends is looking like it's starting to peel off a little bit. Uh, Bray does like the Home Alone shock face and says, Yowie, wowie, Sammy. I wasn't expecting a surprise like this. Thank you so much. I guess you learned your lesson after all. Sammy responds, Oh, you know it, Bray. I, I know now that, that respect has to be given, to be gotten. And I plan on having a lot more respect for the people around me. Wyatt smiles and says, "That's amazing, Sammy. I knew, I knew. I'm so glad you know that respect is a two way street. That reminds me, I should, I should show these wonderful flowers some respect and get them some water." Bray turns around to put the flowers in a vase, and when he does, Sammy grabs a small chair from the ground and bashes it over Bray Wyatt's back, which takes him to the ground. Sammy yeah. runs off. Sammy runs off screen and escapes. After Sammy escapes, however, the camera doesn't cut away from the wide shot of the funhouse. The shot glitches and the room is red as the fiend rises up from the bottom of the frame. In the background, we see the flowers with the best friend's card with the R completely gone, and we see a headless rambling rabbit next to a bloody Mercy the Buzzard. Jesus Christ! The fiend <laughs> jumps at the camera as it cuts away. Oh my god. Oh my god, this is a fam- This is a children's show, WWE is. The, I, I, the whole time I was doing this, I had ramble- I, ha- I tried to have rabbit and Mercy be like analogs to Bray and Sammy. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So now the end, the last shot of just Mercy, like with a headless rambling rabbit, kind of mm-hmm. shows where the fiend's intentions are at. <laughs> yes, yes. No, I like it. I like it. I also like R- Sammy Zayn being Rambly Rabbit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it just, just worked perfectly. I I like this because. I I don't know if that when you when you turned Sami Zayn heel if this is what you're going to be headed, but or when the randomizer forced turned no no he was I don't remember no, either he, way he was heel. Uh, I feel like this is slightly now a face turn for Sami Zayn here. Unless I mean, everyone unless, everyone changes when they come into contact with the fiend, right? Yes, unless it's the Randy Orton fiend storyline where the fiend. Uh, gets burned alive, and he's the good guy. He's like weirdly the good guy, alive. yeah. Yes, uh, despite the murders and whatnot. Um, so may so maybe it's the maybe it's the former, probably hopefully the former, mm-hmm. but who knows? Could be the latter. I just needed a way for Sami Zayn to escape. No, I like it. I like it. Perfect. Uh, yeah. So after that, uh, after that video package, we have match number two. We have Bianca Belair taking on Sony Deville. Uh, and Bianca Belair gets the victory. However, after the match, while Bianca is celebrating, Sasha Banks attacks her from behind. Uh, Sasha goes to lock in the bank statement, and Belair reverses it to get the upper hand and starts to beat down Sasha. She sets up Sasha for the KOD, but Sasha wriggles out and slides out of the ring. She looks surprised that, Bia- that Belair was able to get the upper hand as Bianca stands tall in the ring. Very nice, very nice. Go home show. Bianca Blair gets not only a win but also looks strong heading into it. Reversing, no, it's proving that she knows how to reverse out of the Sasha Banks bank statement, mm-hmm. uh, which is good knowledge for a wrestling match. <laughs> very good knowledge for a wrestling match. Knowing how to reverse your opponent's finisher is usually good knowledge. This is true. After that, we have a uh, we are in GM Page's office with another segment. We have Morrison and Andrade and the Usos uh, sitting at the end of Page's desk, uh, looking staring each other down. Page speaks up and says, "Now that you're both here, let's get this over with because I still have lots of Royal Rumble numbers to pull today." She pulls out a contract for a tag team title match at the Royal Rumble. She said, "This contract is for a standard one fall tag match at the Royal Rumble for the tag team championships that the Usos hold." Morrison, Andrade, do you accept these terms? They look over the contract quickly and nod their heads. Usos, what do you guys think? The Usos look it over as well. They also nod. 
She says, great, as long as both teams accept the terms, you can go ahead and sign. The two teams sign their contract and get in each other's faces. G and Paige splits them apart and says, whoa, 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 save it for Sunday, guys. Now, you're all dismissed because I have lots of work to do, and the two teams leave. A very, uh, uh, just a, no, no really comments on it, but it's just a very simple contract signing Yep, between these two parties. Easy peasy. After that, we have match number three. We have AJ Styles taking on Adam Cole with AJ Styles getting the victory. Wowie, yowie, wowie. Yowie, wowie, indeed. <laughs> Holy crap. Give it away, give it away. S- serious time matches here. Yeah, it's a go-home show, baby. <laughs> after, and after that is our main event. We have Rollins and Murphy taking on Mastiff and a mystery partner. Yes, who could it be? Who's behind door number one? All right, so Rollins and Murphy come to the ring, get their uh, get their whole entrance, blah, blah, blah. They wait. Mastiff comes to the ramp, uh, and he says, I've had a lot of time to think about my partner since you guys did what you did, and I think I've made a pretty good choice. Uh, and then we hear, Oh, Tampa! Don't you dare be sour! Clap for your seven-time tag champs and feel the power! It's It's a a new new day! day. Yes, Yes, it is! is. And the new day come out to join Mastiff on the ramp. And Mastiff... So who's it gonna be? Is it Big E? Is it New D? Is it Kofi? Is it Xavier? Hey, Bigathin! If make their way to the ring, Kofi, Kofi, and Xavier stand at ringside to make sure no shenanigans happen. And in the end, Mastiff and Big E get the victory over Rollins and Murphy. Hey, nice, nice callback of the disciples' New Day rivalry. Big E getting a spot to shine of another big time guy and Mastiff. Yep, very reminiscent of like, well, they're not. You know, they're not, like, too tough, gonna kill you guys like uh, Vader and Bam Bam, but, it's like, you know. Large lads. Yes, this is this is fact. Uh, and they get defeat Rollins and Murphy. Solid, solid move here. Yes, and the end is gonna be Mastiff pinning Rollins. Ooh, to finish out the story, mm-hmm. Rollins gets pinned by Mastiff. Yes. Oh, very interesting. However, I love to see it, folks. That isn't how SmackDown ends. Oh, after, no? After that... After the main event, as commentary team is signing off, we hear them say that something is going on backstage. We cut to a shot of Sami Zayn running through the parking lot to get to his car. He finally does and struggles to unlock the door with the keys because he keeps looking behind him and looking around to see if any to see if, you know, anyone's following him. He finally gets in and goes to peel out when suddenly the fiend appears in front of his car. He starts marching toward the hood and Sammy floors it, hitting the fiend and knocking him over the car. Sammy guns it out of the parking lot as the Fiend lays battered on the ground. However, after a few seconds, we see the Fiend do the bridge, and that is the shot that ends SmackDown Live. Holy shit. <laughs> oh my god. What a SmackDown. What a finish. Uh, I have to imagine that uh, obviously not the last we'll see of Sami Zayn and the Fiend. Definitely not going to be having a title match this Sunday. No, not uh, this Sunday. Uh, but uh, definitely terrifying nonetheless. Uh, solid show, gotta say. I like the beginning of uh, you know, continuation. I should say of uh, Fiend and Zane. Uh, haven't seen them in a little bit. Wondering where they were, and I'm glad to see that everything is maybe not fine, but everything's uh, yeah, good. <laughs> Man, I don't know. Um, I liked um the main event match i like the co-main event of styles and cole there um i liked uh bianca belair sort of like showing that she can st- she can stand with the the best and sasha banks uh i like this show a lot i thought some solid stuff in here solid go home show um to lead us into the royal rumble thank you, and, thank and, you. yeah and, you know there wasn't a lot of like royal rumbleness to the show but uh, I I like it. like you know in, in terms of like the actual Royal Rumble matches, but I think it was still yeah, very I, solid. I I made a decision that this build was going to be less about the Rumble itself and more about the matches in the Rumble because I feel like personal like like personally whenever the Rumble gets built up, I feel like 
the hype is always around the rumble itself and it's never around like all like i feel like a lot of the matches in the like a lot of like the one-on-one title matches in the rumble get like overshadowed a little bit so Mm -hmm. i was trying to give the matches their own build because everyone's going to be hyped for the rumble anyway so i was trying to get people yeah that's a good point for the other matches so i kind of i kind of like gave like a back seat to like rumble build Mm-hmm. and did it more towards the, the individual matches that are going to be at the Rumble. No, I like that. I feel like we did a similar, like, because also on, on Raw, obviously, I did a lot of, like, Rumble talk. You know, a whole whole thing of Peyton Royce. Mm-hmm. Um, and we did something similar in, like, with Survivor Series, where you were focused on building Survivor Series teams, where I was focused on the actual um, interbrand matches. Yes. Uh, I like that. I like that style because you're right. You know, you're right. It's it's in these sort of matches with the Royal Rumble, everyone does get focused on the Rumble. There's no need to hype the Rumble itself. Just hype the stars in it, um, mm-hmm. the potential of them winning. But even then, you wanted to focus on those stories, those other individual title matches. And yeah, maybe you could have thrown in like some Rumble stuff, like thrown in like a guy being like, "Hey, I'm, I got a number." But, like, you know, it's good. It's good that you focus on, you know, Banks and Belair, Usos, Morrison, Andrade, Owens, Joe. You know, good that you focus on these sort of, these matches that you have laid laid in front of us. Yeah, that's that's, that's kind of what I wanted to put a, an emphasis on this time around. So I'm, yeah, glad, I'm glad it came across. Well, speaking of the Royal Rumble, let's go down the full card here, Mikey. Um, this is in no particular order. Um, right now, but we just got it right in front of us. Um, so opening of the well, not opening of the Royal Rumble. I ju- literally just said that it's in no particular order. Um, but nonetheless, we have Mickey James and Chelsea Green versus Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke. After that, we have not. After that, we have Nia Jackson and Tamina taking on Tony Storm and Piper Niven for the women's tag team championships. Very interesting. Those two kind. Con- those two matches. You know, like it yeah, has I, a lot of. Uh... I wish I could have filled more. I wish I could have filled more of a build in for that, but. So, you, you did that last week, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to, I wanted to get more in, but I had so much other things I wanted to do as well, and it just kind of fell back, and I feel kind of bad about it. Yeah, no worries. Um, we also got the men's Royal Rumble match with uh, so far announced Reigns, MVP, Cesaro, Lashley, Sheamus, who apparently pulled some sort of high number. Yes. Uh, Corbin, Elias, McIntyre, Brian, and Gable. Yeah. Uh, we have the women's Royal Rumble. We have number 23 is Peyton Royce. Number 18 is Bailey. And then we have also announced we have Ripley, Morgan, Evans, Riot, K, and Candice LeRae. Uh, we also have other matches here. We got Ricochet versus Tommaso Ciampa for the United States Championship uh, in a steel cage match. We also have Keith Lee versus Dijakovic for the WWE Championship. We also got the Usos versus Morrison Andrade defending uh, the Usos defending their SmackDown Tag Team Championships. Uh, we got Kevin Owens taking out Samoa Joe for the Intercontinental Championship in a two out of three falls match. And finally, for the SmackDown Women's Championship, Banks versus Belair, Sasha Banks, the boss versus Miss EST, the EST, Bianca Belair. Yes. Yeah, so big time Royal Rumble card here. Uh, I, I it's very solid. There's a lot of interesting stuff here that I'm very intrigued at. Uh, those two women tag matches, very intriguing, especially if the building of this sort of women's tag team division properly with us now. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's interesting. It's like now that the iconics are gone, it's like we have a bunch of tag teams now. Uh, uh, which I maybe that's a good thing because now we get to focus on things of our own creation. Yes, that, that that's that's always nice. Um, but yeah, then we got a, a bunch of people in the men's and women's Royal Rumble. We got it, some world title matches. We got some mid cards, some women's and tags. Just it, just an eclectic card, I gotta say. Yes, no Universal Championship being featured this time, which is interesting. But no, no SmackDown Raw, no SmackDown or no, sorry, no Raw women's or Raw tag team. Yeah, so a lot of titles not being defended here, and uh, a lot of a lot of people just in the Rumble. Yes, but I mean that's that's the place of the rumble, right? You know, he's going on and going on and, and competing in the rumbles. More important to some than uh, winning titles, maybe. I don't know. There's, you have the potential to be a star by yes. getting to win. 
by by it, you know look at the star that was made last year Rey Mysterio you know just a a guy that just didn't matter uh, in the history of WWE and then all of a sudden boom he wins the Royal Rumble and he's huge. Yikes. But yeah, um, yeah, I, I really like the Rumble. I'm, I'm always so excited when it comes around. It's always one of the big ones that, like, even even if I don't watch WWE at all, I always feel like I need to catch the Rumble. Just as a wrestling fan in general, it's just one of those I feel like it's uh, it's a, like I can't miss, you know. Yes, if you're if you're a religious person, uh, especially like Catholic religious person or Christian re- religious person. Uh, the Royal Rumble is like one of those is like when you go to church on Christmas. Um, you yeah. know, you could go to you could go to church every other Sunday. And that's probably what you should be doing. But uh, ultimately, you're still going to go uh, on Christmas uh, and Easter. Yeah. Royal Rumble is, I guess, Christmas, and then Easter is WrestleMania. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, they do line up quite well, though. <laughs> it's like it's like the two. It's like you owe. It's like it's like as wrestling fans. No matter which brand you support or which brand you like, it's like you're always gonna watch the Rumble. You're always gonna watch Mania because, of course, like mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. just it's just two gigantic wrestling events. I'm like, how can you miss them? And you can listen to our Royal Rumble pay per view when it comes out this Sunday on this feed that you were listening to. There'll be a bonus episode this Sunday where you can uh, listen to that. Uh, gosh dang, uh, Royal Rumble pay per view. You know, we'll we'll put all the cards together, figure out who the winners of our Royal Rumble is going to be, and you can get that all out and listen to it and get real excited, get hyped for our version of WrestleMania. So again, whatever feed you're listening to, make sure you're subscribed. That way, you can get it right away this Sunday, and I'll let it drop down into you know whether you listen to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, wherever you're listening to it. Make sure you subscribe so you can get that uh, going. You can also follow us on Twitter at Countout Pod. That's Don't at the Countout randomizer. Pod. Uh, I'm getting to the god dang randomizer, Josh. Just making sure. <laughs> you didn't even ignore my, what I called you. Nope. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, we also you can also follow us on Twitter at Countout Pod. There you can vote on which card you thought was better. Was it Raw? Was it SmackDown? Uh, and basically, your votes will determine who is. Uh, who had, I should say, the better show that week. Uh, speaking of, Mikey, let us get to the randomizer. Uh, he just got back from Germany, the randomizer, uh, and he's ready. <laughs> and he's ready to. Uh, uh... <laughs> Anyways, let's let's roll the randomizer. Let's see uh, who won. Let me pull this up real quick. Okay, says here that the winner of the randomizer was Monday Night Raw. Your boy has won it on a streak. Gotta say, a little bit of a well, maybe not a streak, but I, I've got a, a recent string of victories, Mikey. Yeah, and uh, I, I've won it again here today. Everything, so, uh, up, everything's looking up red for Monday Night Raw. <laughs> just like, just like uh, Ramblin' Rabbit's uh, uh, neck, everything's <laughs> coming up red. Yikes. Is that good? Is that is that G- PG? <laughs> R.I.P. Ramblin' Rabbit. Um, I, I'm going to hit the randomizer now t- on you, Mikey. It's a list of a bunch of god dang things. Uh, we're going to see what is rolled on your butt to see who is... Uh, what, what happens? What happens here? You know, one second. Everything is loading, and it takes forever to load, such as, okay. such as, the, such as the world. Okay, the results are in, Mikey, and it's not gonna be. It's not gonna be great. (laughs) Not like that. It's not great. It's not bad. It's not bad. Well, it's not terrible. Could be better, but it's not great. Well, yeah, I don't know. It could be. It could be fine. Uh, I rolled for you. What is it? A minor injury. A minor injury. Oh no! Yes. Roll a D whatever. Right before the Royal Rumble, roll a D whatever to see what wrestler gets hurt. Then D four minus one to see how many weeks they are out. So oh uh, could like not that. be it. This could I. So here's the thing: this will either uh, ruin a title match you have, or just one 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 of these people won't be in the Rumble. 
This is terrifying. <laughs> well, actually, hold on. The, I take that back. The only title match that is at stake is Bianca Belair getting injured. Everyone else, they haven't been announced for the Rumble, but, you know, there's a bunch of spots empty, and I presume that a bunch of them will probably be in the Rumble. This is true. You're right. You're right. You're right. So literally the only... the only, So you you could be fine. You know, it might suck if, like, one of these people are your possible winners of the Rumble, but uh, you could be fine here, honestly. Yeah, I could be, but I'm still worried. I'm still worried that I'm going to get the one bad roll. Okay, well, you got 10 wrestlers here, so I'm going to roll a D10, and we're going to find out who... Which of your wrestlers gets injured, Mikey? Uh, Google is rolling their dice. I rolled a four. A four? That was very close. Uh, four is Sonya Deville. Mm, the person that lost to Bianca. Very close. Sonya Deville. Very, who very lost... close. <laughs> uh, that's so good. Good good on you. That's not great, but not awful. A D4 is a one. Minus one is zero. They're fine. They're, they'll, they'll make it to the Rumble. No worries. My goodness. No worries Thank whatsoever. I got, I got lucky with that one. Thank you, you got lucky. A lucky Thank break. You, I praise thee for for letting for showing me mercy this rumble season. Yes. The randomizer should be praised at all times. Or else <laughs> Or else uh, we get punished. Exactly right. Exactly right. It, it shall smite us. Exactly right. Uh so there you go. Sonny Deville, nothing basically nothing kinda happens. One of those savior shows. Uh, the sh- saving grace episodes of uh, this this podcast. So good on the ra- randomizer. And that is it. That is it for this week's episode of Hit the Books. I already did some plugs, but again, at Countout Pod on Twitter. You can also go to Countout Podcast, Countout Wrestling Podcast Network on YouTube. You can subscribe to us there. Follow us on Twitter. Vote in the poll. It'll be uh, uh, the poll following the show will be uploaded to Twitter. Uh, obviously it'd be the pinned tweet at the top of our profile uh twitter.com slash count pod and there you can vote on which show did you like more do you like my version of raw did you like mikey's version of smackdown again you can vote on twitter at count out pod um mikey anything to plug uh go check out independent waters every wednesday where me and zach batista take a dive into the independent wrestling scene and bring back matches for you to check out and for us to review if you like indie wrestling or if you're just trying to get into it it's a great starting point and it's also good for people who have been into it for a while so if you just like indie wrestling in general go check out that show i think you'll really like it a uh, bunch of things for me to plug. You can also uh, follow me at Ryan Nicey on Twitter. You can listen to my show that is uh, G1 and Only. It's also on the network, so you can go listen to G1 and Only. Uh, I think by the time you're listening to this, I think there'll be an episode out, a new episode out from G1 and Only. The Come on, calendar. Come on, calendar load. Um but nonetheless, uh, at the very least, you can listen to G1 and Only. Basically, the show is we talk about wrestlers who've competed in the New Japan's G1 Climax only once. So it's a fun jaunt through history, I would say. Um, the latest episode, there'll be a new episode to come out this Monday after the Royal Rumble. But the latest episode talks about uh, the appearances of Buff Bagwell, Lord Stephen Regal, a.k.a. William Regal. And Big Titan, which you may remember as Fake Razor Ramon. Fake Razor Ramon, I like it. <laughs> yes, the appearances of the G1 Climax of those fellas. Quite weird appearances, gotta say. Of everyone to send over from WCW, why'd you pick Buff Bagwell? <laughs> I don't get it. I'd pick, out of everybody you could have picked. <laughs> exactly right. Uh, also, you should go check out the other new podcast on the network. Uh, how to talk to your friend about wrestling. Uh, they just joined the network recently. They just joined here on the Countout family. Go check them out every Thursday here on the Countout network. Uh, they are great. They recently just joined. They're fantastic. Great podcast. Uh, super cool concept, and we're very happy to have them. Yes, yeah, shouts out to Amanda and Ashley. Hopefully, maybe we can bring them onto the show as like a more formal introduction to our, our friends that listen to the show. But uh, they're great. Yes. Definitely go check them out. Uh, great podcast. Um, nice little uh, basically the premise is, is that one of them is very knowledgeable in wrestling while one of them is uh, sort of unknowledgeable uh, lacking in the knowledge and so it's their discovery of words I was listening to the, one of the recent episodes and our you know, when we recorded it 
and uh, 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 they learned they talked about the term dusty finish, which I feel like is a term most wrestling fans don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's you know, it, it, but even then they, they they do all this, they do all these lessons, I guess you could say, through the eyes of like watching you know wrestling matches. You know, we, we you know if they come up, if they watch a match that has a dusty finish, and that's what sort of happens here. Um, so I just thought it was very interesting and definitely go check them out again how to talk to your friend about wrestling uh, go look for that on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts and one yeah. final thing to plug is our year end awards it's almost the end of January folks uh, but you still have time to go vote uh, we'll be closing off the polls uh, after January is over so again yeah. go to uh, you know our website uh, you can go over to dot com Yes, I think that would probably be the fastest way to go vote and go go to the polls. So go to our website. There'll be a banner at the top of our website, countoutpod.com, that says vote Everyone in our year-end awards. Yes, go to the polls. It's important to vote. Um, and uh, sorry, I got an a, a off-screen message that said it was snowing, looked out the window, and don't see any snow. So I don't know what my girlfriend Jesse is saying. But there's zero snow where I'm seeing. Nonetheless, go to our website, countoutpod.com. Uh, there'll be a banner at the top of the screen that says, Vote in our year-end awards. Click on that. It'll open up the Google form that has a bunch of stuff. Uh, the Countout family uh, nominated all of these, nom- you know, put in all these nominations. And you can uh, vote on which one, uh, who wins, who in your opinion wins. There's also a company article on the website as well. Countout yeah. family picks 2028 year-end awards where basically all of us wrote kind of why we pick who we think should win uh each award so definitely go and you can read out that article if you need some help uh i would say but definitely go finish out voting last final push here to vote um definitely go vote uh in our year end awards and we would appreciate it so much that is it for this yeah. week's episode of hit the books uh we love you so much everybody that's that's all the fun finally that's- all the plugs. Close the god dang plug bag. It's overfilling. Uh, again, thank you, everybody, for listening to this week's episode of Hit the Books. Until this Sunday for the Royal Rumble, we'll see you then. But until then, we've got two words for you. Book it. Book it.